Hi, welcome. We are at the Buchmann Meta School of Music at Tel Aviv University. My name is Yoel Abadi. I am a horn teacher here and the head of the orchestral music program. I also play in the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. And with us today is Daniel Yaffe, a horn student, and Andy on the piano. Uh, we will start with uh, Strauss Concerto Number no. 1, First Movement. Sounds wonderful. Uh, let's talk about the beginning a little bit. Um, you did it very well. Um, let's try it again with the piano before. Okay, I would maybe wait a microsecond more to have some space between the third bit with the uh, fermata and your entrance. And then you may want to consider prolonging the dotted half note just a little more, okay? And then maybe start softer. Yum, pa -pum, pum, pa -pum, pum, pa -pum, with a forward motion. And I really liked the way you led it to the low B flat, our B flat. And then try not to be late on the half notes, as this is the tempo that we establish for the orchestra, that, or in this case the piano, that uh, starts right after us. Mm -hmm. You did most of it very well, but I just want to make sure and also uh, give you another chance. Maybe it was a little bit uh, too much at the moment on the uh, dotted half, but yeah, I, I, I like it better. Uh, when you take the phrase after the dotted half with a forward motion, don't stop before the, the B flat. And try not to be late on the very last. Uh, note, on the half note. Okay, good. It's a, it can be a bit more in tempo, the, the two half notes. Pom, pa, pom, pom. Uh, maybe uh, straight after the dotted half. Good.
okay. I'm not sure at the moment that the balance is quite right. I would maybe play slightly bit more and maybe Andy slightly bit less so uh, we can have a better balance uh, for this room anyway. And uh, you know, Strauss had two, uh, you, uh, how would I call it, favorites. Uh, one is the horn, obviously. His father was a horn player. Uh, and the other one was singing. His wife was a soprano. So <laughs> what we can do here is maybe go more for the singing. And um, for me at the moment, it feels a little bit uh, with a, a bit agitated. I, I, would, I would maybe consider a more relaxed, you know, singing uh, here. And uh, it means just slightly slower and, and more relaxed, not much slower, okay? okay. Directly from just maybe a, a bar or bar and a half before. Okay, sorry to stop you again. You should plan your breathing. I would actually try to practice breathing on the second beat. Pom, pim, pom. Okay, it can give you, uh, I mean, it's a bit different than most people do, that just take a breath of one uh, quarter, but I think it can, it can help. Let's try again and think about it. Okay, it takes getting used to. Okay, again, I kind of changed your concept. Think pom, pim, pom. Let's practice it without the horn for a second. Pom, pom, without the horn. One more time. Pom, pim, pom. Okay. I would actually play or actually phrase it a bit more, okay? Just a little bit more. I appreciate very much the smoothness and how controlled it is, but I think I would like to hear a little bit more emotion and more phrasing. Uh, and then, you know, in the high B flat, you do it great for whoever, you know, doesn't do it great. You need to notice that Strauss gives us all of the possibility to actually be very accurate with this B flat. It's a crescendo and, you know, an accent. So just go for it a bit more. that that was a bit too much on the B-flat because uh, you didn't do the build-up of the crescendo. So it kind of all of a sudden sounded like uh, detached from the rest of the phrase. But you did it great before, so just maybe just continue from where we are.
nice. Try to be more active with the air. You know, this is very, very different from the from the opening, and it needs a. It's a different idea, and you need to engage more with how you with how you uh, use your air. Okay, so. Pam, pim, pa -pam. I think you can actually just use a bit more air in a more active way. Choreograph the air differently. Um, let's try it uh, directly from the fortissimo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about this breath. It could be much better if, if. Uh, if you have to take it, find another place or try without it. And which one? Uh, between the half notes. Because I, it's also a melodic line. I mean, we, we should try maybe not to. Um, let's practice just that a little bit. You know, I like a lot to talk about the overtone um, uh, theory, and which is in fact our path, you know. Uh, so we need to practice it a little bit uh, according to the key, of course, that we are, we are uh, um, playing. And you do it so well, it's not completely necessary now, but since we want also our uh, audience to have uh, uh, some more information, I think maybe we should use you now uh, as a... <laughs> uh, so let's try to, to think about it, play on the F horn, uh, first uh, valve and uh, with a glissando. Of course, it'll be flat. Try to do it once like that with the path, with the, all of the overtones in between those half notes with a glissando, legato, obviously. Good. And maybe try to control more the going down. Good. Don't stop the air w going down. Don't force it too much. Just let your uh, your uh, ambassador relax a little bit. Good. Now without. Yes, and I also like to work backwards sometimes. So, meaning, try to play. Yes, and now some people add Legato, you know, I don't really care too much about if it's all staccato or not. It can sound nice either way. You can do that if you want, or you can okay. try uh, again from the... Actually, let's try this exercise also for the beginning of this phrase. Yeah, now try... Yeah, that sets up a nice, maybe, uh, 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 you know, setting up the, the, the um, pass so you can play it uh, better when you have, you know, those, those, all of the half notes are solid, then the rest uh, is something that it can improve it. Let's try again with the piano. And try not to stop your air. Pam, bim, pa. And then you start something different. So you can have a slight cesura there.
Okay, that's very nice. Try to play this piano part, which is obviously within solo, a bit more present. Use a bit more air than what you think is needed. Spend more air, and uh, um, I think it can help. Also, your D is a bit flat, okay? The, um, try this just for a second. Yeah, that was a bit over correction. Uh, you use the third valve, which is very good for for the for this specific note. But sometimes we need to listen to make sure that we are not off with the intonation. Try it again. Okay. Uh, let's try from the piano up bit. Oh, actually, I wanted to discuss a bit before. You know, you have. <coughs> Maybe uh, try to have less of a difference between the first two times, and so it'll be more effective if you play softer okay. as you go up. So let's do it again from the fortissimo, have this entire episode. <laughs> The legato part, the piano part, was much nicer, but I think towards the end of it, you lost a bit your patience, you know, for playing, you know, this uh, nice legato line. So try not to lose this uh, kind of a feeling until it gets to the later part. Um, some of the legatis were uh, not as good as they can be, and we need not, you know, stop the air. Uh, so let's try this uh, device that we can play with our mouthpiece. Um, usually, actually, it, it can, this little tube actually can be shortened. I just uh, didn't do it here for now. And try to play with your mouthpiece the other way around, okay? This is how you, we use this device with a little uh, plastic ball inside uh, when we want to inhale. But when we want to exhale, we need to, um, to turn it around. And so we can either do... I try to play now the tempo of the legato part. And we can actually also use the mouthpiece. And you also have here a little uh, uh, piece of plastic that you can adjust the resistance. So we can do it, you know, at the moment on an easy uh, resistance. Try to play it with the piano, actually. Yes, great. 
straight from the. No, no, it's okay. You don't need to. It's okay if it's a bit loose, you know. Try it for a second. Okay, <laughs> let me try it for a second. Maybe the resistance is. We'll just adjust it a bit better. Think about. <laughs> Try to keep the ball up, mm -hmm. or if it goes down, then that immediately it will go back up. Mm -hmm. Let's try together. Try it with the piano for a second. Take more air. Okay, good. Now try it on the horn. <laughs> All right. Yes, it's uh, that's okay. By the way, you can also use this device. Excuse me for making you put the horn again back on your chair. On on such. Uh, uh, also on the loud and articulated part. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit of getting used to. Okay, you need to get the ball up there. From the from the very first sixty note, don't let it. Good, okay, <laughs> that helps us uh, get a better sense. Now we, of course, need to be careful not to over blow. Uh, this is why I like keeping the resistance on a on the minimal level here. Uh, let's do the legato part once more and think about keeping the plastic ball up. discuss it a little bit you know actually it says here piano but a lot of horn players play uh, the other way around like you did pa -pa 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 -pim, pa -pa -pa -pam. let's try it once the in the version that that we have here with the piano uh, in that part now you can also add le a legato between the E flat uh, or even uh, another to connect also the the, the downbeat it can give a bit more contrast, you know, for between the articulation and the preceding notes. So uh, directly from, uh, yeah, I think I lost the key. 
Again. Do the same exercise as before. Okay, play the path of the overtones. You know, because uh, the overtones, you know, it's like you try to get from one end of the river to the other end of the river, and you have little stones in the middle, so you need not, you know, uh, go off the trail. Mm -hmm. Think about it like that. Feel again the overtone theory. Okay, try to make it even faster. Mm -hmm. But you're not completely in sync between the air and your maybe motion of the lips. Yeah, also what can you we, we can use more is vowels. So good because when we use the E our tongue is in a position that is better for the high notes. And obviously when we use the lower vowels, meaning when the tongue is in the lower position, it helps our low register. Let's try again from the same place. Okay, when you have some place that you can sing, try to use it more. Sing it out a bit. Yeah, uh, actually you can go directly from the triplets. I just want to remind a few things because you are doing it well for whoever is uh, seeking of advice regarding fingering all of the pa 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 pam the um, c f a can be you know just op uh, uh, open b flat horn then it's you don't need to think too much we try you know when we can make our lives easier i would i would i would do that and in that case you did it well the only thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, it really depends on your horn, but but it's advisable to play the A flat on the second uh, uh, valve and the and the open A above the uh, staff uh, with an open B flat. Uh, I know that it can be low in some of the horns, in most of the horns, so we need a bit to correct it with our with the way the way we uh, uh, use our air. So if you can actually master this fingering, it'll be to your benefit because it will produce a more relaxed uh, sound up there. Uh, let's uh, do again from the triplets and finish the movement.
now my fingerings? Yes. Okay. It was uh, successful in the A flat. Maybe the A, we can, or you can work it uh, on it a bit more. But I think that it, it can help. Uh, try to do this uh, working backwards with the 16 notes. Uh, because let's try to get them a bit cleaner. So just do it alone for a second without the piano. Add three sixteen notes before the half note. Okay. Yeah, more qui quicker actually. Ta 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 ta. Yeah, you know the single tongue is the horn player's best friend. It's good to master the double and triple tongue. Of course, it's not only good; it's necessary. But. Uh, we we need to work also on our on our fast uh, uh, yeah single tongue and this is one way to do it ta 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 and then add just another sixteen each time try it again or actually let's try only two sixteen notes ta 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 good ta 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 one more. Mm -hmm. Good. So play from the fortissimo. Sustain, sustain, sustain. Yeah, that was better. Uh, do you want to do some second movement? How do you feel about it? Okay. okay. <laughs> you know the transition between the first movement and the second movement, despite the modulation, is so smooth that uh, we need to be very concentrated, obviously. We cannot play everything now, but uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I heard uh, experienced horn players, you know, asking, you know, oh, am, am I supposed to start now? Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> so we can maybe play a few bars just before the, the second movement. I think you are on the sharp side, okay? Um, so try to fix that. Some of the notes were sharper than others. Um, I'm also not completely... It's a problem I have when I play uh, piano and strings. Really? Okay. That's interesting because a lot of players actually have the other problem when playing pianissimo. They drop the intonation because of lack of support and uh, so uh, actually try maybe uh, to do open your, your, your main tuning slide a bit and oh good and um, I'm also not completely convinced with the balance I think it's a bit you know it's pianissimo of course but we need to remember we are still the soloists here we need to be heard uh, so I would try a hint of more presence. Uh, also, try not to get to be late on the first uh, uh, note. And um, obviously, when we play it alone without the piano, it sounds quite static because of the long notes. The piano really helps us. So try to 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 listen to that as well. So it won't be static. Directly second movement.
very mm. nice. You know, uh, it's written crescendo, diminuendo. You need to do it in proportion and in accordance to what comes before and later. It sounded to me a bit out of context almost. Uh, so try to prepare it a bit differently. Uh, so it'll sound like it's one line, not something that's played piano and then all of a sudden a crescendo that is not completely uh, connected to how it was before. So it's a matter of, uh, you know, using the, um, just the right amount of, of air uh, when, you, when you perform and when you practice. Directly from there, uh, after the uh, 16th notes, uh, with a bit of the 8th note. Okay, sorry, maybe I shall... Yes, right. continue but I think now it was maybe a little too less so sometimes you know when we try to correct something we go too much to the other extreme mm -hmm. so uh, think about it at home when you practice because I want to continue let let you get to the more to the other exciting parts in this movement so right where we stopped from the mezzo forte mezzo piano sorry It's still sh it's still sharp. It's counted very well. It's also a notorious place for not. It was not correct. No. Yeah, let's let's just count it again. Um, let's start five uh, from the pianissimo. Pom pom pom. Make sure we count right. Try this part again and maybe think about some things differently. First of all, of course, this is the same theme, yes? 
like in the beginning, but as much as, like in the first movement, I mean, but as much different than it can be. It's not relaxed, legato, smooth. It's fortissimo with accents, go for it more. Let's start from there directly, from the fortissimo upbeat. And then think here in the second time that it, we can, Try to, to do um, something with the dynamic, maybe a, a little less, and then build it up. I'll try to help you as you play, and this is going to be the end of the lesson for today. Yeah, do it more confident. Pom, pom, sing it for a second without the horn. Yeah, but I sound, I hear. Pa pa, try to th sing it really, like with a better sound, with a better voice. Pom pom, pom pom, pom pom. Mm -hmm. Better, better. Practice your singing. I should also. <laughs> Try the path, first and second valve, B flat. Again. Yeah, don't stop the air and give an accent, more of an accent on the, almost as for sound on the downbeat. Good, okay. I think it sounded better. Do you have any question? <laughs> no, you don't have to ask if you don't have any. <laughs> how, how do you uh, survive such a tiring... Uh, you know, <laughs> I once heard a sentence from uh, one of my teachers. Uh, you have to endure until endurance is achieved. So it's like other, you know, uh, like, it's, it's a physical activity. You need to build up your stamina by practicing, by playing a line, play it over and over, add another line. Uh, you always need to actually try to get tired and then play some more. Uh, so it's a matter of how you, you, you build up uh, your stamina. And that's only, there is no shortcuts here. So uh, maybe this, this is a bit something that we'll speak in the next lesson about that. Uh, but that's a very good question. And the answer is that there are no shortcuts. You have to uh, challenge yourself. You have to play over and over phrases. You have to connect it to the phrases before, to the phrases after. And you also need to remember that you need to be your own teacher. So when you practice, you find a ways uh, that, th that helps you. Sometimes you can be a better teacher for yourself than other teachers, because you know yourself the best. OK? <laughs> Bravo again. Thanks. So here we conclude the first lesson. Rafi, 